lineup was just announced to the crowd here at Lawrence. Let's show you the starting lineups for both programs. We begin with Kentucky again. Each player offering up his favorite emoji. And there is Derek Willis, who has averaged about 12 points, 10 rebounds per game over the last four games. And he's gone from a role player into a starter for Kentucky in recent games. For Kansas, Perry Ellis having just a terrific year, a terrific career here at Lawrence. And Landon Lucas starting his third consecutive game, Jay. They don't look to him for offense. But Bill Self likes putting another veteran, an older player out there, and a guy who can really rebound the basketball. He rebounds, and he's a very good position defender. He does what's required, but you're right. He is not an efficient scorer. <laughs> this is something else, and we're underway here at the Fog. Kansas with the opening possession of the game. Boy, and Perry Ellis just took out Isaiah Briscoe on a screen and was wide open as a result of it. And Ellis, the senior, averaging almost 17 a game, gets Kansas off to a good early start. Boy, that screen will rattle your molars. Nobody could hear it called out, and Briscoe got leveled by that. Alex Poitras driving on Lucas. Lucas stands him up. Tyler Eulis, one of the best point guards in the country. 20 or more in seven of his last nine games. Shot and clock running down. Kansas on two switches. Briscoe gets inside and draws the foul. Now take a look at this ball screen. Perry Ellis comes out on a little run out ball screen and just levels Isaiah Briscoe. And then, you know, if you're going to have a switch, you, got, you have to have your wits about you, and Briscoe was trying to find out what state he was in, let alone trying to switch off. Isaiah Briscoe at the line for Kentucky, just a 39% free throw shooter on the season, but he did go 5-6 to six in Kentucky's last game, a win over Missouri. 22-6, to six, the all-time series history, favoring Kentucky, and at one point, it was 16-1 to one in favor of Kentucky. The Wildcats have won the last three, including the national championship game in 2012, but Kansas has won the last three in this building. 2-2-1, three-quarter court pressure by Kentucky. And Mason gets all the way to the rim. And that's the way you handle pressure. You beat it to score. Wayne Selden on Jamal Murray, and that's a key matchup because Murray is the best scorer on this Kentucky team, averaging over 17 a game, gets them in a variety of ways and can really shoot it. There are some great matchups all over the place here tonight. Briscoe follows up his own miss, got fouled again, and tempers flare a little bit here in the early going. Well, nice job by the officials to get in there quickly. Looks like they're going to call a technical foul. And maybe Briscoe there on the shove at Lucas. I think it was after. I think he said something after. It didn't look like they were going to call anything until there's something happened after. Not the way you want to start off a game, whether at home or on the road, to have the referees at the monitor looking if there's anything flagrant. The officials tonight, Mark Whitehead, Pat Adams, and Doug Sermons, a veteran crew, as you would expect in a game of this magnitude, and they are at the monitor checking out to see what happened. Briscoe took offense to the foul and the push is really nothing you know good job of going straight up and when he got it back got fouled first by Devonte Graham and it looked like Briscoe pushed but I don't think he really got much contact at all and then Frank Mason came in to say something and that's when it escalated a little bit and I think something was said after that that caused the officials to get upset. So Briscoe will be shooting free throws because he was fouled in the act of shooting. But assuming there is a, a technical on Briscoe, then Kansas will get a couple of free throws as well as they continue to try to sort it out. And remember, a technical does count as a personal, as now both coaches are being summoned in. There was really a whole lot of nothing that went on, and the officials handled it really well. But I'm not sure that anything should result in this. 
But both teams should back off a little bit and just play ball. Doug Sermon's now coming over to tell Jay exactly what it was. All right, you may have been able to hear that Doug Sherman saying it's a dead ball contact technical foul on Isaiah Briscoe, and because it's a contact foul, Jay, instead of point of interruption, Kansas will get the ball. Exactly. Right. And it's a, it was because of the push, even though it didn't look like there was a lot of contact or any contact on the push, referees determined that there was. And Harry Ellis to shoot the technical free throws. Wow. The 77% free throw shooter. Maybe he's not used to having nobody in the lane. <laughs> yeah, that's all. Nobody might be part of it. Yeah. So that right arm right there, because must be what it was, because they told us it was a contact, dead ball technical foul. So that's two shots and the ball going to KU. Looking right inside to Perry Ellis after that ball screen. Good job switching everything by Kentucky to pick that up. Mason, Selden for three. Tipped back out by Ellis and a fresh 30 for the Jayhawks. Graham back into Lucas. He'll kick it right back out to Mason. Kansas has got some openings to throw the ball inside. Their passes have not been very precise. Selden having a terrific year, rejected by Poitras. And Alex Poitras is such an outstanding athlete. John Calipari talks to him all the time about play like an elite athlete. Two-man game, Eulis and Willis. Eulis was hollering for a ball screen from Willis, and now Jamal Murray getting started a little bit too quickly. He's called for the travel. And John Calipari telling him to start it with the dribble and then make your move instead of making that quick move and then dribble. Great block by Alex Poitras. Who even after knee surgery and missing last year's season is incredibly explosive. Good pass. Selden's been shooting the three very well this year. 47% on the season. Spinning move by Ellis into traffic. Got the ball back, and now he is called for the travel. Boy, Kentucky sitting right on that spin move by Perry Ellis. Anytime that Perry Ellis drives to his left, he is always looking to spin back to the right. Now, Alex Poitras does that for Kentucky, but a really good job by Derek Willis to be there and help side defense and sit on that spin. Eulis driving on Mason off the glass and good in Kentucky on top by one. But how hard is it to stay in front of Tyler Eulis? He not only plays low, he's incredibly quick and quick with the ball. Obviously a much, much larger role than he had last year, and he has grown into that role and then some as a sophomore. But Kansas is getting switches. They can take advantage of these. Devontae Graham for three. And that's an example of taking advantage of a switch. Alex Poitras switches off. He's got to back off to honor the drive, and Graham pulls up for the shot. Willis with the answer at the other end. He can really shoot it. And as Jay mentioned off the top, a much bigger part of the, of the Kentucky rotation the last four or five games. Well, and you really can't help off him because catch and shoot threes. He's shooting 69% effective field goal percentage. you got to make him put it on the floor. And an offensive foul going against Lucas, trying to establish position down low. Now, Tyler Eulis, when he gets a step on you, he can get by, and he's a very good finisher, but Landon Lucas unable to get there to try to block or change that shot near the rim. And Eulis able to lay it in off the glass. Well, it is so important. You know, Tyler Eulis' leadership in this environment is so important. He's a great defender, can really guard 94 feet, and an excellent decision maker. Early minutes tonight for Sheck Diallo, who has just come into the game for Kansas with Lucas going to the bench. Mason down to the rebound. Diallo, minutes have been up and down. Uh, ineligible the first five games while well, the NCAA sorted out eligibility issues. A very talented but a very raw young player. Graham misses the three and Poitras with a rebound. And a really good box out. I didn't really like that shot by Derek Willis on the last possession. This team wants to get in there and drive the ball into the paint. And I think what 
Kentucky's got to do. Everything they run is so they can move the defense and drive it. If you drive it and kick it out, then Derek Willis took a great shot. But he took it under duress, and that's not a good one. Foul on Frank Mason, his first. Four minutes in, one point lead, Kentucky. Eulis trying to get inside again. Nice cut by Poitras, and he'll finish strong over Diallo. And it looked like he got hit up top. That was a strong finish because that was through contact. Well, you talk about playing above the rim, and Kentucky is blowing by their initial defender, drawing help and able to drop it off. And that was one of Big Self's big concerns when we talked to him at shoot around this morning was could they keep Eulis and the other Kentucky guards out of the paint? So far, they have not done a great job of it. You was limping around a little bit. You might want to drive him. Two-man game. Diallo will bank it in, but it's an offensive foul. Wave off the basket. Three-point lead, Kentucky. When we come back, John Calipari live with our own Seth Greenberg at the U.K. bench. Wildcats up three early. ESPN's exclusive presentation of John Calipari's priorities tonight, really. Will uh, Seth will speak with Bill Self out of the next timeout. Murray driving on Graham, and he's called for the offensive foul. Just a little bit of a lean in with that right shoulder. After running some good offense, some good action to move the Kansas defense and then attack it. Well, Kansas has run some good offense. They just turned the ball over. And both teams have had some initial turnovers in the ball game, but when they've not turned it over, they've gotten good shots. Graham guarded by Eulis. Shot clock down to 12. Still plenty of time for the Jayhawks. Well, look at that pressure by Eulis. Turnaround jumper Graham doesn't get the bounce. Offensive rebound. Selden. Well, that's what Wayne Selden needs to do more of. He's not as good of a rebounder as his athleticism and his body suggest that he should be. Eulis to the cutting Briscoe. Boy, what a great cut by Isaiah Briscoe. Oftentimes when a guy drives, everybody spots up at the three-point line when you can get more done if you cut. Get to the rim. And Isaiah Briscoe's off to a great start. He's four for four from the free throw line, shooting at around 30% as a free throw shooter. And away from the ball, a foul against Kansas. It'll be Perry Ellis. Tyler Eulis with the drive, and he has been getting by his man, gets by Sheck Diallo, and a terrific cut to the rim by Isaiah Briscoe. A Briscoe, not a shooter, but he can really operate around the baseline and off the dribble. Excellent job of keeping his eyes up. You know, a lot of coaches say your eyes make layups. You have to keep your eyes up in order to finish those plays. And, Jay, that's the second foul on Perry Ellis. He has gone to the bench. That is a major loss for Kansas. Yeah, that's a huge loss because he's their only front court scorer that's really reliable all the time. Jamari Trailer in off the Kansas bench for Ellis. For Kentucky, Marcus Lee has checked into the game. So has Charles Matthews. Good help by Diallo. Got a switch. Now Ulyss can go by him. Had to force it up, got the rim, but that's it. Numbers for KU. Mason, Selden. <laughs> Not a great offensive lineup in the ball game right now for Kentucky. Little stutter step drive, Briscoe off to Willis for the baseline jumper. Boy, and the one guy that can knock down a perimeter shot, in addition to Tyler Eulis in the ball game, is left wide open. I mean, you just can't leave Derek Willis open. Sheldon over Matthews just kind of threw it up and found the bottom of the net. Well, you know what you like about Sheldon? He's attacking off the dribble instead of just settling for jump shots. He's an excellent jump shooter, and has shot the ball really well all season long. Boy, you was keeping that dribble so low. Briscoe driving on Graham, and he is fouled. Wayne Sheldon first getting out in transition. Kansas turning defense into offense. Excellent pass ahead here by Frank Mason. And a nice finish by Selden. But here's Selden using his strength, taking Charles Matthews right into the lane. 
and just going right into his chest and finishing over. And Selden has shot the ball so well from three-point range. It's been basically the trio from Oklahoma in the Big 12 and Wayne Selden in the middle of them. They have been the best shooters in this conference. It's already a bonus situation for Kentucky. Kansas piling up the fouls, but Briscoe misses the front end. That last foul was on Devontae Graham. He's gone to the bench with two fouls, and Jamal Murray's checked back in for Kentucky. Selden just knocked one down right over him. Selden off to a great start tonight here for Kansas. Well, this is the Wayne Selden that every Kansas fan wants to see. He's been aggressive, smart. Boy, what a great move by Jamal Murray. Selden tried to go over the top of the screen. He faded into the corner. That was a beautiful catch and shoot off a great offensive read by the freshman. That's the 54th three for Jamal Murray this year. He's got almost half of the team's totals. Mason can't shake Briscoe. He'll try again. Tough catch in the corner by Brandon Green, who is checked in, and he is stripped by Euless. Euless no, Willis no, and Euless then reestablish in bounds before he touched the ball, so a missed opportunity for the Wildcats. What a great start to this game. Kentucky Josh, but on this end, we're not keeping them out of the paint at all. You're going to sh shrink the defense a little bit and play a little bit off, or you can get, get beat on some penetration? Well, that's what we've been trying to do from, from, the, from the jump, so we'll try to do better. I hear you. Thanks. Our thanks to both coaches. Great job, Coach Greenberg, getting some live in-game sound. Here tonight, Kentucky 18, Kansas 16. Remember Ellis and Graham, each with two fouls for the Jayhawks, and now a Kansas turnover. Well, another open postman for Kansas, and a poor pass. The post feeds have not been as they normally are, quite as good. Poitras with a travel. Big Monday on ESPN, 7 Eastern time. You'll see the North Carolina Tar Heels, the second-ranked team of the nation, taking on Louisville. Louisville soundly beaten by Virginia today. This game also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. Barry Ellis sitting with two fouls. Devontae Graham at the moment standing, but sitting as well with two fouls. Kansas has some depth, but as you said, Ellis is far and away their best offensive front court player. Yeah, you lose a ton of offense when Perry Ellis goes to the bench. He's a guy that can score inside. He can catch it out on the perimeter. He can hit a perimeter shot. He can shot fake and drive. He barely averages almost 17 points a game. The first time in a long time that Dominique Hawkins has played. This is his first, first play in, what, seven or eight games. Yeah, had a sprained ankle, and, and John Calipari said this morning, he thinks he's probably ready to play, but you want to reintroduce him in a game of this magnitude. They just did. Brandon Green, who's a terrific three-point shooter, 54% on the season. This is a pretty good look. Hawkins back. What does he give Kentucky? Well, he gives them defense, and he plays really, really hard and some experience. You know, he hasn't played since that old Miss game when he got injured. Well, I'm a little surprised. It seemed like John Calipari was saying he didn't want to put him in in a game of this magnitude. Now, it'd be his first game back. Let him ease his way in, but he's not easing his way in. And Allen Fieldhouse. And the guy who can't ease his way in is the guy with the ball, Scalabissiere. John Calipari basically told him, if you don't go in there and fight, you're coming out. You're not going back in. This is where he can excel, that elbow jumper, but he misses the 15-footer. Mason finds Green. Can't and Green up. finds the bottom of the net. Brandon Green cannot be left open to catch and shoot. Kentucky was fortunate on an offensive rebound that he missed one a couple possessions ago, but he's not going to miss many. Yeah, he's a little bit of a streaky shooter, but he is an excellent perimeter shooter when he can get his feet set. And Kentucky allowed him to get his feet set on that possession, and he absolutely drilled it. Graham back in for Kansas with two fouls. Briscoe in for Hawkins for Kentucky. And a double dribble is the call on Isaiah Briscoe. Kansas playing off of Briscoe and giving him plenty of room. They do not care if he's going to pull up and pull the trigger from 16 feet or further. It's him getting to the rim, getting into the paint, and drawing the defense that has been the problem. Turnover's a problem for both teams in the early going. 
Got to watch a corner three here. Eulis guarding Green in the corner. Sheldon the drive. LaBissier sluts it away. Briscoe crosses over and is fouled by Jamari Trailer. Well, you talk about converting from defense to offense. That's what Kentucky loves to do. And that's the scowl LaBissier that John Calipari wants to see. Guy who goes up and challenges in the air and blocks that shot, keeps it in play as Wayne Selden went right into him. And he was able to block that shot with his left hand, but more importantly, keep that thing in play so that uh, Kentucky could turn it into offense immediately. Briscoe back at the free throw line. He made his first four. He's missed his last two. A couple of guys who are key players, Briscoe and Lee, really struggle at the free throw line, down below 40%. And now LeBissier is called for the over the back foul. Now, LeBissier got the foul, but I'm not sure that John Calipari is too bothered by that because he was more physical. Now, Scal LeBissier over his last 10 games is. Only two rebounds a game over that period. Kansas three on two and tipped away by Poitras. Not a very smart play. Murray steps into a three and buries it. It is amazing. You make a dumb, dumb decision offensively to throw that lob by Jamari Trailer. Now the basketball gods tend to punish you. You give up a wide open three on the other end. Second three of the night for the freshman Jamal Murray. Selden around and out. Trailer hunting the rebound gets flattened and Poitras will get called for the foul. Jamari Trailer throws a little alley-oop pass here and Alex Poitras able to knock it away. Not the smartest decision by Trailer and it led to a wide open three in transition. Well, how good is Jamal Murray? You give him the least bit of space and he's going to take advantage of it. He's one of those guys that you have to find right away and you just cannot leave. Carlton Bragg checks in for the first time for Kansas. Diallo goes to the bench. Graham went looking for the foul. There was no contact, and they'll play on. Willis is open for three, left it short. Selden the drive. Selden the reverse. What a night. And what a great decision. Earlier in the season, maybe the game at Iowa State, I think he would have pulled up for that jump shot. Instead, he took it to the basket, put even more pressure on the Kentucky defense. What a smart play by Wayne Selden. He's got almost half of their points. Murray, not this time, and Green down to the rebound for the Jayhawks. Well, you can't go over the top of those screens. You've got to stay with Murray to chase him off that three-point line because he makes really good reads on a fade. Selden lobbing it in for Bragg. Guarded by LeBissier. Bragg from 18. Got it. Kansas on top, 12 minutes in. Eulis pulls up and ties the game. It's so hard to stay in front of Eulis, especially for Brandon Green. I mean, Eulis just gave him a little juke move, and he was absolutely gone. No Mason in the game right now for Kansas. He was guarding Eulis at the outset. Two-man game. Brad with a jumper. Hey, you back on top. Playing a little pick and pop. Carlton Bragg, the best shooter among the young Kansas big men. And Bill Self able to steal a lot of minutes for Perry Ellis on the bench with those two fouls. Eulis got Graham in the air and knocks it down to tie it again. How good is he? What a move. A little up and under move by the sophomore point guard. And it's not like Devontae Graham's not a good defender. He's a good defender. And a switch out front. Green guarded by Willis. Hand off Graham. Trailer. Kentucky got caught on a switch, and Kansas made him pay. Good job by Selden to just lock on to Jamal Murray and stay with him. Murray in and out. Go, go, go. 
Selden. Stolen by Willis, knocked away by Willis. Labissier comes up with it. And back come the Wildcats. And another poor post feed by Kansas. Willis to travel. And we've got a timeout. Two point lead for Kansas. One of the very best point guards in the nation, Tyler Eulis, showing you the whole bag of tricks here early in this game. Getting Graham up in the air and knocking it down. But back comes Trailer and Kansas at the other end to reclaim the lead. Just yet. Guys, I think he got there tonight. He's certainly playing like the alpha dog. My goal was also to be the alpha dog this year, but Jay informed me that position had been filled over. <laughs> Well, he certainly played well to start off this game. You know, to have 10 points and playing it as hard as he has played defensively. He's got to stay aggressive, though. Bragg gets the bounce. Kansas by four. Right, this is as well as Carlton Bragg has played all season long. And in this atmosphere, with this big time of game, that portends some great things in the future for that young man because he's got a lot of ability. Three for three, six points. Eulis gets the bounds. Eulis now has eight points to keep Kentucky close. Look at the speed by Mason, but Bragg called for the illegal screen. I don't know about that one. Carlton Bragg was just trying to move his man up the lane to post him. And I don't see how that's an illegal screen. He was posting. That's not an illegal screen. There's nothing illegal about that. Gillis ran into his own man. That's just an over-officiated bad call. Do you think, Jay, as long as Kansas leads or is even close if they were to lose the lead, do you think there's a chance Perry Ellis doesn't come back this half? Uh, he may come back the last couple minutes to get a little bit of a feel before halftime, but I think if Kansas remains you know, right at the lead or around the lead, I think he stays out. I don't think you, you risk him picking up a third foul, especially when... You know, these screens are being whistled like that. He's been out for nine minutes. Yeah, and there's and they're such, such a long way to go. If, if he were a sophomore, maybe you'd say, geez, maybe we need to get him out there because you, know, you lose your rhythm and you don't know how to play through fouls. But I think with him being an older player, you can do. Remember Jim, when Jim Calhoun did that with the Mecca Oka before in 2004 in the uh, Final Four against Duke? It's something you can do. Briscoe with the shot clock running down, forces and misses the three. Mason to Green. He'll step inside and draw the foul. Now tomorrow it's the NBA Sunday Showcase on ABC. Jimmy Butler and the Bulls taking on Chris Paul and the Clippers. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 3 o'clock. This game also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. We'll have the... Uh, annual announcer swap coming up Wednesday so you're going to do an NBA game you got the Warriors and the Wizards Warriors and the Wizards on Wednesday with Mike Green and Doug Collins and I've been told that you've been asking for an announcer swap with me for a long time now <laughs> this this though is just a temporary thing from what I understand. <laughs> as far as we know <laughs> uh, I'll be down into Miami for the Hurricanes and Notre Dame Miami and Notre Dame with Vital and Van Gundy. We're both going to have fun nights. It's That'll be a great. blast. You will have an absolute yeah. blast with Dick and Van Gundy. Kentucky down four. Eulis off to Lee, whose minutes have really gone down in recent games as Willis's have gone up. Now Murray's going to make something happen. Step back three, not there. A great defense by Kansas. They iced her down that ball screen, and then when Tyler Eulis gave the ball up, Frank Mason would not let him get it back. That was a big-time defensive play by the Jayhawks. Mason with a switch has Lee on. Diallo. How about that? Bill Self said it this morning. Diallo had a great practice yesterday. He would play tonight. Knocks down the jumper. Timeout Kentucky as the Kansas lead has grown to six. The history of the game. This building. I mean, I've said before, I think this building has a soul. It's an amazing place. And I think Kentucky feeling that soul right now. So that's what John Calipari wants from his team. Start attacking off the dribble. Penetrate. They've been getting into the lane almost whenever they want. And I think Kentucky's gotten away from that and has become a jump-shooting team. And he can't have that. They've got to attack off the bounce. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, you nailed it. That's exactly what he just said to the guys. He talked about toughness. He said, listen, guys, if you don't have guts, 
You're not going to play in this game. And take a look at John Calipari right now. There's no AC in this place. He is coaching his team. Briscoe back at the free throw line where he seems to have been all night long. He's now five for eight. He's the only Kentucky player to get to the free throw line in this game. Well, that's because he's been attacking off the dribble. And here's a guy who does not make perimeter shots at this point in his career. And he's putting the ball on the deck and he's forcing fouls. Kentucky trying to pressure Mason gets by it. Selden is fouled as he goes hard to the rim. Well, Wayne Selden, another player that's been attacking, and that's not what he has done all season long. He's been very good from the three-point line. He shot nearly 50% on this early season, or the first half of the season. But when he combines that with attacking off the dribble, with that athleticism and that body, well, the irony, you attack off the dribble, it actually opens up more jump shot opportunities because the defense has to react. I don't know how you feel about this, but Ellis has been a... A very good player for four years. Mason's a, a terrific, very solid point guard. It feels like Selden could be the wild card that determines whether Kansas is a good team or potentially a great team. Yeah, I think he's the difference between good and very good for them to, to really take it up to the next level. I mean, they're very good now. They're 16 and 4, 5 and 3 in the league. It is a very capable basketball team. They're just not as strong as some of Bill Self's past teams. Hawkins back in, will get the bounce. Kansas is a game out of first right now with the Big 12. There are three teams at six and two, and three teams, including Kansas, at five and three. And as I think all college basketball fans know, they have won or shared 11 consecutive Big 12 regular season titles. But you look at it right now, I mean, there's some, this is a great league. It's the only uh, major conference that has a true round robin, a home and home. And you, I mean, obviously Oklahoma is a great team with a win. They got over LSU today. Everybody playing out of conference today in the Big 12 SEC. But there are some two, Iowa State, West Virginia, some great teams in this league. Yeah, I think the historic accomplishment of Kansas in winning 11 straight Big 12 titles has overshadowed how good this league is and how difficult it is to win. I mean, you're looking at a guy there in Bill Self that is 209 in this building. That's beyond mind-boggling. Yeah. Beyond it, there, there should be an NCAA investigation of how you can be 209. Remarkable. And six of the nine came relatively early in his tenure. In the last 149, as Eulis knocks down a floater, well, after 146 and three in this building. You know, Bill Self has to be really upset after a missed free throw to give up an easy shot in the lane. And Eulis now with a double figures. Brad, that jumper wide left and one that he can make but a little bit too early in the offense Eulis again what a game he's having he's got a dozen and Kentucky goes back on top forcing Bill Self to take a timeout after a couple of bad shots bad possessions on offense you know Dan your offense has to help your defense and when you take a bad shot that puts your defense in a bad spot at conversion and Tyler Eulis taking advantage of it getting in the now, Jay, you've been singing the praises of Tyler Eulis all night long, and deservedly so. Chris Dunn of Providence, as good a player as there is in the country, but how many point guards are there that you would take ahead of Tyler Eulis? Not very many. I mean, Chris Dunn, for, for the long-term potential. Uh, Chris Dunn's bigger, he's longer, uh, he's a, a better rebounder, better scorer. But Tyler Eulis is such a great leader, and I think he's one of, the, uh, of a handful of the best point guards in the country. I, I would put him right on the, the top shelf of the best three or four. And he, you're right about the leadership. He is the talker out there. Every Kentucky game we do, we see this. We see him talking to LeBissier. We see him talking to Murray. Just telling people where they need to be and what they need to do. Well, he's not, a, he's not afraid to hold others accountable. And that doesn't mean you're blaming others. It means you're encouraging them to do the right thing. And sometimes you have to encourage them in a, uh, in a deeper voice. With more on Eulis, here's Shannon. It's fascinating to watch Tyler Eulis, the way he addresses his guys after almost every single play. You know, Coach John Calipari said some of his best teams, the quality that they have is that they take ownership of the team. Tyler Eulis is one of those guys. He actually started the breakfast club again. This is something Michael Kidd-Gilchrist did a couple of years ago. They get up in the morning, they stretch, they work out, just a group of them. But he is taking ownership of this team and running with it. And ownership really means that it's not everything isn't going to be directed by the coach because coach directs the teams are only going to go so far. You've got to have player leadership. Alex Poitras with just his second made three of the season, and Kentucky with a two-point lead. 
And now Kansas trying to take advantage of some angles and go off the dribble and put Kentucky in a position to foul because then you're going to the free throw line every time on a common foul. At the line, Frank Mason for Kansas. He is 10th in the Big 12 in scoring. He is 5th in the conference in assists. He's been a little bit turnover prone in a couple of Kansas's losses. But averaging almost five assists per game, Jay, also for a guy who's 5'11", averaging almost five rebounds per game this year. Coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams, Buddy Heald, 32 points. What a win for Oklahoma over LSU with a preview of the Spurs and the Cavs coming up on ABC a little bit later on this evening. Cavs losing to San Antonio just a couple of weeks ago. Tie game. Everything we hoped it would be thus far. Important two minute stretch here as we go toward halftime. Kentucky's got the arrow. If there's no change in possession of that arrow, Kentucky starts the second half with the basketball. So how this last two minutes is handled could wind up determining the outcome of the game when it's all said and done. Euless the drive, the kick, the cutter is Poitras, and he'll slam Kentucky back into the lead. Well, how, how hard is it to stay in front of him? Well, Gerald Vick did a good job, but he just got blown by. Vick misses the three, down with the rebound, Briscoe. Too quick on the trigger by the freshman Vick. After he gave up that drive, taking that quick shot, now all of a sudden Kansas playing defense again. Poitras open inside the arc and five quick points for Alex Poitras. We talked about the last two minutes being important. And it's been two scores and one stop. And Kentucky's starting to put some distance between themselves and Kansas as we go to the halftime break. And actually, Poitras with the last seven for UK. The three, the slam, and then the jumper. And now a Kansas turnover. A smart decision by Tyler Eulis. He looked like he might let it go out of bounds. When he saw he could pick it up, he picked it up. Eulis stops on a dime and is fouled by Vic. Well, Alex Poitras, you mentioned it, Dan, is not a great perimeter shooter. Knocks down a three off the penetration. Just blown by off the dribble. And is able to get the dunk. And then knocking down that jump shot at the top of the key. And Poitras has had a really good game offensively, and he's not really a great offensive player. He's a great athlete. At the line, Euless, it seems like every point Kentucky has scored, either directly or indirectly, Tyler Euless has factored into it. 13 points, 4 assists, but even if he's not getting the point or getting the assist, he's initiating the play. Well, he's on the court every minute of game time. He's not getting any break. It doesn't look like he needs one. He's in extraordinary condition. Kentucky continues to grow the lead. You said this was a pivotal last two minutes. Boy, it's been an impressive minute so far for Kentucky. Yeah, the first minute of the last two has been all Kentucky. And it's important for Kansas to run good offense here and get a score. Because this can be one big run for Kentucky because they get the ball to start the second half. Selden drives and banks it home. Well, that was a really smart play. Off the little dribble exchange for Selden to attack the basket instead of settle for a jump shot. Kansas has been settling. Huge 30 seconds here. This game could swing either way. A defensive rebound for Kansas is huge here. It gives them an opportunity for a score at the other end. Briscoe, Lee had it knocked away off his leg. Out of bounds, back to Kansas. So KU got the stop, now looking for the score to get it back down to a one-possession game going into halftime. Got to watch for a fade screen here. I would watch for Selvin to get the ball. Green handling. Driving knocked away. Euless comes up with a loose ball. Murray adjusts and hits. What a big sequence for Kentucky at the end of the half. Boy, and not a smart play by Brandon Green at the end. He needed to give that ball up. Instead, he took it on his own. And as a result, Kentucky gets a layup. I mean, that, that could not have been the call that Bill Self had for that play. 
and as a result of a bad decision, it's a layup on the other end. Bill Self standing by with Shannon. Well, Coach, you called that timeout with just under three minutes to go. What are your concerns as this half has ended? Well, we can't keep the ball out of the paint yet. You know, that their guards are getting anywhere they want. You know, we pride playing zone a couple possessions and, and uh, uh, and, and, and combo, and, and we may have to go back to that. Harry Ellis has been on the bench, but Wayne Seldon has certainly showed up. How has he influenced your guys? We actually played pretty good out of foul problems, uh, uh, but we need Perry out there. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. At the half, Kentucky ends the first half on a 17-6 run. Smiles before anything but. About 63% from the field, and they got to do a better job. They turned it over 11 times, have to do a better job with the ball. They're putting their defense in a bad spot. Moments ago, Shannon Spate spoke with John Calipari. Thanks so much, Coach. The guard certainly set the tone. What else did you emphasize for your players in the second half? I'd probably say Bill Self and I are saying, maybe you want to guard somebody. I mean, it's like, I guess this is, we're trying to both make it 102 to 100. I mean, um, you know, we're fighting like crazy. I'm happy with our effort. I thought everybody tried, and um, we'll go out there and see what happens. Thanks, Coach. Remember, Perry Ellis only played six minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. For about the first ten minutes after he was sitting, Kansas did great. But Kentucky closed the first half very well in a 17-6 run. They've got a six-point lead as we go to the second half. Well, Bill Self stole a lot of minutes with his best scorer, Perry Ellis, on the bench so as not to pick up that third foul. But he can still be aggressive to start off. Got a switch. Now he's on Eulis. Eulis had a great first half, and he picks up right where he left off. Tyler Eulis now with 16 points, 7 for 9 from the field. The last 2 minutes and 20 seconds or so, that's an 8-point eight, eight advantage for Kentucky. Really well handled by the Wildcats. Ellis the kick. Graham the 3. Get the ball inside to Perry Ellis. That defense collapses. You kick it back out, and then you can step into an open shot. Really good offense to start the second half for Kansas. Jay, Kentucky shooting 64% tonight. Kansas 57. As Poitras is fouled, I think it was Lucas. Let's take a look now at tonight's Sonic Showdown. There have been a lot of great players in this game, but two have stood above the rest. Well, and Euless has been the most efficient. Made his first bucket to start this second half to give him 16 points. He's also got five assists, not a single turnover. Near flawless basketball on both ends by Tyler Ulis. The smallest player on the court has had the biggest impact in the game as Poitras knocks down the free throw. You know, and his penetration has been so debilitating to the Kansas defense because you help off trying to stop him. And then Alex Poitras comes in from the corner and he's gotten a couple of dunks. He's made an open three. Well, his offense has come mostly from Tyler Ulis. The lead grows to seven for the Wildcats. Kansas ranked fourth in the country. They lost at Iowa State on a Monday. On Monday, Kentucky's won three in a row. They are ranked 20th in the nation right now. Graham behind his back. And Derek Willis was right there to try to block that shot. What an amazing play by Devontae Graham. And you'll be seeing that one later on tonight. That's a gimme for Sports Center. Mason on Eulis. Mason trying to keep his hands off and doesn't want to pick up a cheap foul. Eulis, another jumper. Well, you had better stay up and connected when you are hedging that screen. Because you give the least bit of space to Tyler Eulis, and he knows exactly what to do with it. And he's so poised coming off a ball screen and attacking it. High low, Ellis into Lucas and a foul. Well, a couple plays ago when Devontae Graham got into the lane. And that's a terrific shot. Just throwing it right up over his head. Got some contact, got fouled, but kept his eyes up and finished the play. But Lucas Lance. at the line, third foul on Willis. One thing Landon Lucas did a terrific job, and he, he really does a terrific job as an experienced player. He really sealed off in the lane and posted his man, and that's what allowed him to get the ball. Didn't finish the play because he got fouled. But his positioning, running the floor and getting that early post position, really made that play for Kansas. So Willis has to go to the bench. He has not played a whole lot tonight because of foul trouble. The BC Air back in for him.
Two minutes into the second half, Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Shannon Spake. Saturday primetime presented by Direct TV. Kentucky on the road here where Kansas has won 34 in a row. The second longest active home court winning streak of the nation. Kentucky's up by six right now. I really think Kentucky's got to do something to get Jamal Murray going. You know, he's knocked a couple shots down, but he needs to do even more. Mason rattles home a three. And now a Kentucky turnover, trying to inbound the ball. Kentucky just stepping over the line, and now Kansas getting a run together of its own. Mason again. Brown wanted a foul. They don't get the call, and Poitras has the rebound. Well, LeBissier went straight up, and Frank Mason just throws his body in there. The officials aren't giving that call this year. And you like the aggressiveness of Frank Mason in attacking the paint. Selden on Murray. That's the key matchup. They're going to try to run something to get Murray going. But LeBissier just got called for the moving screen. Boy, every big guy in this game, you have to stay stationary. Let the, let the cutter use the screen. Jamal Murray knows how to make a read. And LeBissier can't move to pick off that defender. LeBissier to the bench. Marcus Lee back into the game for Kentucky. They play off Lucas. They know he won't take that shot. Or Poitras really trying to be physical with Perry Ellis. Got a switch. Seldon. Leans in, had it blocked. Briscoe tries to save. It'll stay with Kansas. No reset on the shot clock, so five to shoot. Five seconds, still plenty of time on the inbound. Not much room there with which to inbound it. Mason trying to shake Euless. Two to shoot. Gets it off. Rebound Murray. A terrific shot fake by Frank Mason to get Euless up in the air. That's not easy, an easy thing to do. Murray for three. And it's going to be Lee over the back. And John Calipari's telling Murray right there, you're moving side to side when you're shooting. Not going straight up. Murray having a tough time getting some looks ever since he knocked down the two early ones. So he's not been able to establish any rhythm. And part of it was he didn't attack off the dribble as well. He's got to add that into his game and not just be a jump shooter. Got another switch. Graham misses the three. Offensive rebound, Lucas, and he's fouled. Jamal Murray, I believe, or is it Poitras? It's Poitras with his second. These switches, it not only puts some difficulty on a guy like Poitras that has to guard on the perimeter, but then Isaiah Briscoe has to block out a big guy. And that puts the guard switch in difficulty as well. Boy, Poitras still, as you said, being really physical with Ellis. Shot fake and a drive. Mason rejected by Poitras. Here come the Cats. They have numbers. Euless for three. Long rebound to Lee. And bodies are flying everywhere. And Mason will get called for the foul. A very physical start to the second half here in Lawrence. Kentucky leading by three. When we come back, well, we were at practice yesterday, and we heard Coach Self say, I'm going to blow a gasket. <laughs> <laughs> so Perry Ellis wasn't making that up. Well, Perry Ellis has had a terrific career. Well, heck, his last two games coming into this one, 24 and a half points, 19 of 33 from the field. The foul trouble's really limited him in this one. Briscoe the kick, Poitras short on the three. Well, Poitras hit one of those in the first half, but that's not a shot that I think Kentucky wants to see often. Mason misses a corner three at the other end. Euless tonight, 18 points, five assists, three steals, no turnovers for Kentucky. Lee will lay it in, and the lead is five. Boy, what a pass by Isaiah Briscoe. Nobody picked him up, and he saw Marcus Lee right along the baseline. A good catch by Lee and finish. That could have been another foul on Ellis. Just about got one. 
with Willis having foul trouble. Lee and Poitras are the front court players right now for Kentucky. The BCR has been in and out. He's played eight minutes in this game. That's all. A nice job by Briscoe. He got switched off onto Perry Ellis, front of them. And then Marcus Lee really gave a lot of attention as a secondary defender and really helped out. That was solid defense by Kentucky. Briscoe gets into the paint, doesn't get the shot off, finds Murray. Five to shoot. Back to Briscoe. The drive, the finish by Lee. It looked like a little hybrid zone there by Kansas, and that opened up the offensive glass for Lee. And Kansas had not allowed a lot of second shots, and this is an excellent offensive rebounding team that John Calipari has. They get 40%. In the early 80s, his first job was actually serving food at a summer basketball camp. Then he was an assistant coach under Larry Brown, and he actually met his wife, Ellen, here, who worked in the athletic department. Ellen was at this game. She traveled, and it was a walk down memory lane for both of them. Well, then after John Calipari left, he had one year here as a volunteer assistant, Jay, then two years in his assistant coach. When he moved on, Bill Self came in and exactly. became an assistant the next year. Actually, John Calipari was hired by the great Ted Owens, who was a, a fabulous coach here, Coach JoJo White and Darnell Valentine, and he hired John Calipari after Calipari had worked his camp. And then when Larry Brown replaced Ted Owens, Calipari came back from Vermont. He'd taken a job as a full-time assistant briefly at Vermont, and then wound up coming back to Lawrence to be an assistant to Larry Brown. Boy, what an amazing block on the other end by Marcus Lee. You know, Kansas had run a play out of that timeout where they isolated Carlton Bragg on the elbow and opened up the lane for him to drive, and Lee just wiped that thing away. It's not quite Willie Cauley-Stein and Carl Anthony Towns, but they can still protect the rim better than most. You're darn right. And that's why when you're guarding the drive, you don't want to foul because you've got shot blockers behind you. They can block or change a shot. And Graham fouled by Briscoe. So Kansas ran a little horn set. They dove one big guy down, and that opened up the lane for Bragg. And that's just... Talk about playing above the rim. What a block. Sheldon. A big first half. Those are his first points here in the second half. A little circle action off the out-of-bounds under. And Briscoe just tried to give a little tough and pressure, but there's nothing he could do. First points in four minutes for Kansas. They're down six. Got a switch. Murray needed to take Bragg to the basket there. He just gave up. Willis with a shot fake. Eulis with Ellis on him. Two to shoot. And Ellis might have gotten a piece of that. It'll be a shot clock violation. Kansas ball. Where Kansas makes Willis. Shot fake put it on the deck. Stayed with him. And stayed right with Tyler Eulis. Not maybe the best matchups for Kansas, but they made it work. Mason got a switch again. They're looking for Perry Ellis down low. Sheldon, another baseline drive. He's doing what you said he needed to do. Mix up the shot and the drive a little bit more equally. Well, if you drive it, that shot will be open. And Kansas putting some game pressure back on Kentucky in this amazing atmosphere here at Allen Fieldhouse. They were initially looking for Perry Ellis. And Alex Poitras, because he was so concerned with Ellis, couldn't get all the way to the baseline to cut off that drive after Selden got the step on Jamal Murray. And Jamal Murray needs to start thinking about doing that kind of thing on the other end. When he got a switch, got a big guy switched out on him, he had Carlton Bragg on him. He started to drive him and then just quit on the drive. He needs to just go by a big guy and really put some more pressure on the defense. You mentioned the amazing... Uh, atmosphere here, the amazing atmosphere and the amazing talent that they have had here, contributing to some incredible records here at the Fog for Kansas. The cartoonish sounding 209 record that Bill Self has here in this building, including 34 in a row at home, the second longest active streak 
in the NCAA behind only Wichita State. Arizona had the longest streak, but they were beaten at home by Oregon earlier this week. That 209 sounds like the Globetrotters record against yeah. the Washington Generals. <laughs> I mean, it's really one of the great yeah. achievements. The screen for the screener action. Boyfriss. Can't finish, and hard to hear the whistle here. It's a foul against Kentucky. I thought Poitras got fouled early on in that play when he's trying to turn into the lane. But wasn't able to complete that play. Now Kansas needs to get a score here. Remember, a lot of the players were different, certainly for Kentucky, but Kentucky thrashed Kansas last year, 72-40 to in the Champions Classic. And even though a lot of the faces have changed for the Wildcats, you know that Kansas would dearly love to exact a measure of revenge on the program that handed them that lopsided a defeat. Yeah, maybe the bodies inside that Kentucky uniform have changed, but don't think that Kansas doesn't remember how humiliating that loss was at the Champions Classic. I mean, that game was never close. And it showed just how awesome that Kentucky was, especially defensively. Great drive by Ellis. Couldn't finish, though, with the left hand. Hands down at that end of the court, screaming as if Willis maybe had rolled onto the end line, onto the baseline, but they play on. Hawkins misses a three, and the back come the Jayhawks. They have numbers. First to speed by Mason, and turned it over. Got caught in the air before he knew exactly what he wanted to do, and it'll be Kentucky ball when we come back. Kentucky by four, 11.50 to go here in this one. So, where are you guys? Using the built-in Wi-Fi in Tina's new Buick. Wow, that doesn't look... Two, he's shooting 18 of 27 coming into this one. That's 66%. And in seven out of his last nine games coming into this one, he scored 20 or more, and he's about to do it for the eighth time in 10 games. That's really an amazing stretch for an outstanding point guard, Tyler Ewis. Hasn't come out of the game as well. He's played all 28 minutes. Briscoe's played 27, Murray 25. Selden and Mason have played virtually the whole game for Kansas. Briscoe gets to the glass. But Kansas can't guard the ball. They can't stay in front of the ball. Now these Kentucky guards are really difficult to stay in front of, but there's got to be some help side. If you're shrinking the floor, the help side's got to be there. Lead back to six. Kentucky closing the first half on a 17-6 run. Big shot for Selden. He's got 20. Well, another ball screen and a switch. And Selden took advantage of it. He had Derek Willis on him. Risco with trailer on him. Risco again with a drive. Blocked at the rim, but okay. count the basket. It'll be a goaltending call. A couple of Jayhawks were there. Trailer might have been the guy to actually make contact with it. Well, Kentucky just spread them out. Two guys in the corners, two guys on the deep wings. But nobody comes over. Or at least they came over late. But the ball hit the backboard first. And once it hits the backboard, you got to leave it alone. That was a good call. So count the basket. The lead is five. Big 12 SEC Challenge, Oklahoma in a thriller over LSU just before this one. Earlier today, Texas A&M defeated Iowa State. Boy, A&M is good, aren't they? Really good. Really good. <laughs> Force a lot of turnovers. Selden again. Selden is having himself a game. He's got the last 10 for Kansas. Well, this floor really shrunk up. It looks like almost a zone. Risco with an air ball. Willis is fouled after gathering it in. Boy, the air ball, the offense always seems to have an advantage when it's an air ball because they can follow the flight of the ball. Oftentimes, the defense looking to box out. And Willis, who's been so good for Kentucky the last four games, 
at the line right now for the Cats. Don't forget, Big Monday comes your way on ESPN beginning at 7 Eastern time. It'll be North Carolina, the second-ranked team in the nation, taking on Louisville. Game also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. North Carolina beating Boston College today. Louisville losing at home to Virginia. Uh, Virginia holding Louisville, I think, was to 47 points today, Jim. Well, not surprised that Virginia gets the win, but really surprised at the margin. Got to watch Selden here off of a fade screen into the corner. There it is. It was well guarded early on by Kentucky. And Graham fouled. If it's Willis, it's his fourth. And it is. And John Calipari's got no choice. Marcus Lee coming back in. And now continuing to drive the ball, put your opponent in a position to foul every common foul. You're shooting free throws. At the line, shooting a one and one. Okay, Graham. Graham, the sophomore from Raleigh, a 71% free throw shooter on the season. Okay, as we look to the basket to our right and just look up at the students behind the basket as Graham shoots his free throws, Briscoe getting a little work on his left leg. Just a, a great scene. They get as loud as they are, is as great as they are. Everybody with the arms up in the air. Well, there's not a better atmosphere there is in all of sport yeah. than Allen Fieldhouse. Cameron is great. Hinkle is great. The Palestra is great. This looks like a triangle in two. I mean, it may very well be. Yeah, this is this looks triangle in two to me. Yeah. Ulysses and Murray. Yeah. I mean, the, the defense has been shrunk so much. Sometimes it can be tough to tell. Shot clock running down. Murray. Bounce pass Poitras. Kick out Hawkins. Eulis for three. And Murray on the glass uncontested. Well, that's when your first shot defense was excellent for 29 seconds. And you allow a, an incredibly high percentage second shot. That's why you gotta they talk about your, your defense is not over until you grab that defensive rebound. Mason. What a rebound. My goodness. And then Ellis is fouled by Lee. What an incredible rebound by Perry Ellis. Talk about an extra step on your ladder. Nobody boxes out. He just went right over the top of Jamal Murray. And you got to turn and lay a body on Perry Ellis. Can't let him come in from the free throw line. Kansas needs Ellis to be Ellis. Hampered by foul trouble. Only played six minutes in the first half. He made the first basket of the game. Has not made a field goal since. He now has four points, including that free throw. Three rebounds in limited minutes. Hawkins out. Briscoe in. Let's see what Kansas does on the defensive end here after this free throw. Are they going to go back and pack the paint and then go into man as they get down to a low clock? Because clearly Graham and Mason are playing man. Ellis another strong rebound. John Calipari is living with Alex Poitras right now. I think he's telling him to move. You can't just stand there. Third on Briscoe. And another free throw opportunity coming here for Kansas. Kansas only has five team fouls. Kentucky won away from giving up two shots on every common foul the rest of the way. And it'll be Ellis at the line again. Hard work on the glass at both ends. The last two trips for Perry Ellis. There's a feel right now of this being a war of attrition. Right, missed the second one last time down and missed the front end this time. And this is a game where Kentucky's got to continue to hang in there. I mean, they got a two-point lead. You got to execute on the offensive end. Poitras. Rebound Mason. I just don't think they want a jump shot there from Alex Poitras. Graham. Fouled by Lee. 
That jump shot, I'm not sure how many people expected that in blue, but it really put Kentucky's transition defense in a bind and allowed Kansas to go from defense to offense and really punch the lane and get a foul. And right now, you know, Kansas is able to get to the line, score with no defense from the free throw line, get a little bit of rest, and set up their defense as well. So Graham at the line for Kansas. The foul on Lee, his fourth. He comes out. Coming in, Willis. He's got four fouls. And there's a long way to go. That's the problem. I mean, you're looking at limited options for guys that have been playing a lot of minutes. Ms. Scalabissier can come in, but he's not been playing big minutes for John Calipari. He's not been used to this kind of atmosphere either. One of two for Graham. We got Graham on Murray. He had to pick him up, and Mason on Ulis. Looks like they're back to man to man. But just playing soft. Again, the shot clock running down. Mason knocks it away from Ulis. Long pass to Graham. Couldn't handle it, and he turns it over. But Graham looking behind him yep. to Jamal Murray and just wasn't able to corral that ball. Offensive foul, Poitras. Third on him. A nice feather with their cap. Well, whoever wins this game is going to pick up a, a quality win, to say the least. Yeah, and the loser doesn't lose anything. It's just an opportunity. But uh, I'll tell you, you take a look at Joe Lenardi's number one seeds. Uh, Oklahoma and North Carolina, without a question, and both Villanova and Iowa have played extraordinarily well all season long. But there are going to be a lot of changes. Yep. Well, you like the way Kentucky has hung into this game. They've had some opportunities to give up this lead. And Kansas has missed some free throws and turned the ball over, and there's another turnover. But Kentucky's really on the road where they've had some problems. You know, they've lost some games that have not stayed as much together. They have really hung in there in this game where they've got some foul trouble. They lost at Auburn a couple of weeks ago. They have lost at LSU. Lost at UCLA, a game we did back when they were the number one team in the country. Murray in the corner, and again, they're late into the shot clock. Murray for three. Out of bounds to Kansas. Let's check in with Shannon. John Calipari telling his guys in that last timeout that they have to play Wayne Selden no catch. Don't let him catch the ball is what he told his guys. As far as offensively, Alex Poitras and Marcus Lee, they have to be in position to make the jumpers. Again, Kansas looking for the lead. They have not led this half. Got a switch, and they've been switching everything. But you got to drive that switch. Graham gives it up. Selden into Ellis with Eulis on him. And Lee recovers and got a fingertip on it. Boy, that was a great recovery. And Ellis probably should have gone up right away because they did have that switch with Eulis having to guard him inside. And Kansas really staying at home. They're switching everything. Looks almost like zone because Kentucky's standing a lot. Briscoe can't finish, and Briscoe is down. He's cramping. Yep. They were tending to that leg earlier on the bench. We've got a foul at the other end, but Briscoe is down, and I would agree with you. Sure looks like it's a cramp. Hawkins, as you can see, is going to make his way back into the game. Attorney for Kentucky, Derek We saw him getting worked on before, and you see that left leg just straight out. That's the sign of a cramp. He's taking some Gatorade in the same spot and getting worked on. Now he's back on that spot again. And boy, Kansas missing so many free throws. Ellis is a 77% free throw shooter. And he shoots 84% yeah. in this building. And he's two for six tonight. The foul was on Poitras. He's got four. So Lee's on the bench with four. Poitras and Willis in the game with four. And we are tied with less than six minutes to go. And just back in straight man. Looks like they're in there in their 41 defense where they can do some switching. Now on Frank Mason, his second. 
And it's the sixth team foul on Kansas. So the next one will send Kentucky to the line. The Jayhawks have been to the line for a long time. But well, when you get into the one and one is so important. I mean, Kentucky's had to play a lot more minutes with every foul being two free throws. Kansas just haven't hit them. Good pass. Willis in the corner. And a chance for the Jayhawks again to take the lead. Mason needs to go by Willis. That was a bad, a bad decision. Got lucky there. Ellis back out to Mason. Mason the drive. It rolls off the rim into the hands of Kentucky. Well, that's what he should have done the first time. Just missed it. What a heck of a move, though. Wide open is Hawkins. That's out. That's it for Willis. Yeah. Over the back and out. Not sure you want to take a risk right there with just under five minutes to go. Better part of Valor might have been to let that one go. Willis hampered by fouls all night long is done. And Lee is back in for Kentucky. And again, we've mentioned it, but Lee and Poitras both have four. If one of them fouls out, presumably the BCR would be the next guy to come back in, but he's hardly played here in the second half. Let's get an update as Kansas has the lead for the first time this half. Get an update on Briscoe with Shannon. Well, Dan, he's in a ton of pain over here on the on the bench. They're continuing to work on that left thigh with the roller. He's trying to get some Gatorade, but they've tried to straighten that leg several times, and they're just not having any luck. So that means Hawkins will get some minutes for Kentucky. Kansas with the lead, and you can feel it. You can hear it. The noise deafening here at the pond. And Kansas looks like they're back in that zone hybrid. Murray ties the game. Boy, does he have a lot of game? As he learns to incorporate more driving in with his shooting ability. And Jamal Murray's a, gonna be a big time player. The lead by Kansas. Mason cut off. Graham will try it. He's cut off. Ellis will try it. Eulis has it taken away by Trailer. And Mason knocks down a three. Eulis again. He's got 21. What an answer. And Wayne Seldon did not know what defense Kansas was in. He was playing man. I think Phil Self wanted his team in that hybrid defense to try to pack the paint. But it was so loud in here, I don't think he could hear the call or see it. Well, these, both these teams showing a lot of guts down the stretch. Graham fighting hard to get inside, and he draws the foul. Tyler Hewlett to a timeout. Tyler Hewlett has got to be exhausted. He has gone every minute in this ball game, and Frank Mason, after that steal, knocking down the three. What a gigantic play for Kansas. And then off the high ball screen, Tyler Eulis. From the Australian Open, Sports Center at night on ESPN and streaming live on the Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. And if you're looking for the X Games, it is starting as we speak on. Starting. Starting in one minute on ESPN News, we're here at Allen Fieldhouse at the University of Kansas. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Shannon Spake. Another miss. Yep. Been an unbelievable night. Uh, another miss free throw, as you say. Kansas is now 16 of 26. Yep. That's 10 misses. 61% yep. as a team on the night. Well, you wonder Kentucky has expended so much energy so many fouls they're in a difficult atmosphere and Tyler Ulis has played every single minute do they have enough gas left in the tank to pull this off 
And still no Briscoe. Hawkins in the game. Eulis, what a play. Well, he is unbelievable. Well, he's got enough gas in the tank. When you talk about him being smaller, is he big enough? And I said earlier in the year, if you're good enough, you're big enough. And this dude is good enough to play with anybody. 23 points, five assists, three steals, and one turnover. Mason. Trailer to the follow. And that's why you want to drive it. You go after the block shot, it opens up the offensive glass. Trailer was right there. LaBissier back in for Kentucky, and he puts the Wildcats back on top. Wait, how about that kid? Well, he has been criticized all year long, and that's not been unfair. But for him to come into this game in this atmosphere and be unafraid and knock down that shot at this stage of the game, boy, that's impressive. Give that kid a lot of credit. Mason the drive. And Frank Mason is just body seeking. He is going right into the chest of the defender. And that's not going to give him as good of an opportunity to finish the play. So one thing Kentucky cannot do is foul him when he does that. And Bill Self will take a timeout. Next to last one for Kansas. But Tyler Eulis has just had another outstanding game. Getting the ball off a handoff, getting a screen, and then splitting it, and going right past Perry Ellis to knock that down. And then after Kentucky goes for the block shot, that opened up the offensive glass for Kansas. And then Scal LaBissier coming into the ball game, Kentucky with Isaiah Briscoe out with those cramps, and Derek Willis fouling out. Marcus Lee with four fouls. Poitras with fouls. That's a big play for him to come in and knock down that elbow jumper. One of the things at stake here, the second longest active home court winning streak in the NCAA. Wichita State has the longest. Kansas has won 34 in a row in this building, but they're down one with two minutes to go. Now Kansas scored a bucket off out of bounds underneath the last time they had an opportunity running that circle action. And now John Calipari is going to take a timeout on the heels of one uh, by Bill Self. Well, you know, some of the coaches were saying, I don't know, to step out of conference for a game of this magnitude, any coaches in both conferences at this time of year, you know, is this the best thing? As impartial observers, we can say this is a pretty good thing that we're seeing here. Today. It is the yeah. best thing. <laughs> and, and look, you know, their conference races are really important, but at this time of year, football's over. All eyeballs are on college basketball right now, or at least more eyeballs. And I think this is the perfect time to play these games. I think more of these ought to be played because, one, the fans want to see them. And the players want to play in it. And, you know, I, look, I can tell you from my experience a million years ago as a player, and I think I can speak for a lot of players, you, know, you don't talk later in life about your games against the directional schools early on in the season. You talk about and you remember the games like this. Yep. These are the ones that everybody comes to Kansas or Kentucky to play in. Kentucky leading the all-time series 22-6. to six. They were last year in this building in 2006. Kansas won that one. Shot clock is down to five. And that's why John Calipari called that timeout, so they wouldn't give up anything easy off out of bounds underneath. Offensive rebound, Ellis. Selden into the paint, left it short. Another offensive rebound. Well, you give so many chances. Now you, get, you didn't Shot get clock. a reset. Yep. You give so many chances, and you're going to give Kansas an opportunity to score. Kentucky played some good defense and just didn't clean it up with a defensive rebound. Give Kansas all the credit for going after it. So they didn't reset it after the second shot attempt grazed the rim. Now they correct the mistake and it's back to 28. And Marcus Lee had to come back into the ball game to help grab a defensive rebound because Scal LaBissier is not a rebounder. It's not, he's seven feet tall, he doesn't grab rebounds. Trailer. They got five, yep. And that's it for Lee. John Calipari pointing to the other end of the floor saying look you call it on this end call it on the other and that's where you put Marcus Lee in for defensive purposes and he's not going to be able to play any defense going forward if he would have stayed hand straight up he got he got him on the arm there more than anything but if he'd stayed straight up I don't think they would have called the foul there because he was in good position body wise it's just that arm you could read his lips he said I didn't do anything yeah he did he hit him on the arm <laughs> and his coaches are telling them look you got to stay straight up there 
Just make him score over. Wall up, make the guy score over. With. So Willis and Lee have both fouled out. Labissiere checks back in. Poitras playing with four. And trailer, pretty good free throw shooter. Shoots about 79% on the season. Another miss at the line for Kansas. Big Monday on ESPN, 7 Eastern Time. It'll be North Carolina and Louisville, also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. We'll also see the Tar Heels on game day next week. We'll be in South Bend. It'll be North Carolina and Notre Dame one week from tonight at 7 Eastern Time. KU has now missed seven of its last ten free throws. That means free throw box outs are a big deal down the stretch. in that hybrid defense. Oh. slams it home. Now that is the way an athlete takes the ball to the basket. Wow. Kentucky back on top as we move into the final minute of regulation here at Allen Fieldhouse. And Isaiah Briscoe playing with those cramps. You might want to go right at him. Covering Graham. Instead, it'll be a throw for Selden. Ends this back on top. Calipari, the last one he's got. What a night for Wayne Selden with a career high. Now the inbounds is going to can be really difficult here. There's not a whole lot of room if they want to really get up and challenge this inbound. If you remember that Oklahoma game, there was not much room at all, and the referees tell Frank Mason to stay back. Look, there's very little room. It's going to be Murray to make a play, and he puts Kentucky back on top. Well, what a play by Jamal Murray. Just got right into the chest of the defender, pulled back. And what a sweet touch. Just a fraction of a second between the game clock and the shot. Oh! Murray with a block from behind. But it's out of bounds to Kansas. And that was as clean as they get. And Wayne Selden wound up on his back. Boy, offense by Jamal Murray to take the lead and defense to protect it. That was as good a block as you're going to see by any guard all season long. Coming from behind, and he got it, I think, with his left hand. Doesn't foul, goes up and blocks this thing. That is one hellacious block. Wow. That's a strong player in Selden who was sent to the floor hard, but you're right, it was no contact from Murray. But Jamal Murray on the offensive end takes the handoff and goes right at Frank Mason into his chest, knocks him back, and still has the great shooting touch. Boy, take the lead, protect the lead, number 23. Heck of a player wore that a few years ago, Anthony Davis. Uh, Jamal Murray, a different player, but what a heck of a sequence for the freshman from Canada. So now I asked you the question in the Kentucky huddle a few moments ago. What do you think Bill Self's going to draw up here? Well, I think you've got, Bill Self's got a lot of different things that he can do off out of bounds. I don't think they look for it right away, but if you get it out top, you know, they've run some things where they can get a fade screen for something in the corner, then a rescreen. I mean, he's got a thousand different options he can go to, but Brandon Green coming into the ball game, a guy who can knock down a three, so you've got more threats out there. It's not that you need a lot of size. You need shooting in there, and Green provides that. Boy, if they lose this game, it'll be the free throw shooting that they lament. They're 17 of 29, but they've still got a chance to win it. Ellis, the handoff to Mason. Back to Graham. Ray in the drive, shovel pass, Ellis, and he is fouled and will head to the free throw line. Well, Scalabissiere tried to go straight up, but Ellis able to draw that foul. Smart move to drive it and put the referees at a decision. 
And John Calipari is trying to steal some time with his team here. There's no timeout. Nobody fouled out. And now the officials are trying to get the players back onto the court. And the officials all year long have done a great job of administering free throws quickly. That saved a heck of a lot of time. Ellis, 77% on the season, but has struggled tonight. He's now 5 for 10. Kansas is 17 for 30 from the free throw line. Well, the free throw line has absolutely put Kansas in a bind here at home. But they can't worry about that now. You know, the only thing in front of Kansas is this free throw right now by Perry Ellis. And for Kentucky, they have got to get a free throw block out. Now, whoever is on the side of Labissiere has to really go in there. It's Jamari Trailer. You don't want to violate, but you want to go in there hard. Now, Mark Whitehead is disallowing the substitution. Well, you can't go out and come back in without a, a possession. So Hawkins has to come back in for Briscoe. Ellis with a chance to tie. No timeout, shot clock turned off. Here comes Ulis. He wants a ball screen. He lost it, and it's Kansas ball. Now Kansas can look to go long or mid court. Here, one thing you don't want to do is turn the ball over and have Kentucky able to take it out underneath. And I think the officials are going to see if any time should be put back on the clock, or maybe they're looking to verify who it went out of bounds off. If it sure looked like it went out of yeah. bounds off of Ulysses. I don't I think, think there's any question yeah. off of Kentucky. Yeah, so this is a clock issue. Both coaches can uh, get a few seconds with their teams. Uh, Ulysses coming off that ball screen, and Jamal Murray didn't move. I mean, he should have just faded into the corner, and Ulysses just lost it. And Ulysses was yelling at Murray after the play. I mean, you can come against the grain or drift down into the corner. Coming against the grain and coming back, he would have been would have been open as well. But right now, Tyler Ulysses talking to Scala Bissier to this is a spot throw-in. So you gotta, with his size, if he can influence the pass, maybe get a piece of it. Makes it much more difficult, but it's important for Kansas. You, hey, you want to try to get a shot here, but you don't want to turn the ball over where Kentucky can take it out under that bucket. And apparently they are looking to see if it grazed Mason. The decision is no, and it'll be Kansas ball with 2.2 seconds left. Brandon Green back into the game for Kansas, a great shooter. Selden will inbound, as, and as you said, Jay, it'll be Labissier, all 6'11 of them, guarding the ball and trying to make it difficult on Selden. There's plenty of time to get at least a runner up, at least. And if you're able to throw long, you can get more than that. Got to get it in. Mason gets it off. Oh, almost hit a half. Court shot at the buzzer, but the basketball gods have deemed that 40 minutes is not enough here tonight. Not when you've got these two blue bloods playing in this environment. But you have to think, Dan, that the advantage goes to Kentucky or to Kansas because they've just got more bodies available. Boy, that's a that's an awfully close. <laughs> that, that was uh, awfully close. That was like Gordon Hayward close. <laughs> And they will play on into the night here in the fall. Boy, what a game, huh? It's been great. The two winningest programs in college basketball history. And we're tied at 76, going to overtime. Kentucky's done a great job on the road and with foul trouble. They're already down a couple of players in Willis and Lee. Kansas should be home and cooled out, but they can't make free throws. 
Uh, how does Kentucky continue to persevere in overtime? Well, they, they've kept plugging throughout this. I think it's pretty remarkable they've gotten to overtime. Uh, they've hung in there. You know, Isaiah Briscoe fighting through the cramps to get back onto the floor and make some meaningful plays. But I think Kansas has got to continue to attack and put Kentucky in the position to foul. Did you hear any of that? It is so loud. No, but I'm sure it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Ewis leading Kentucky with 23. Wayne Selden leading Kansas with a career-high 26. And here we go into overtime. Of course, Kansas has been in overtime before. You saw that graphic. And they needed three overtimes to beat Oklahoma back on the 4th of January and what arguably, Jay, maybe not even arguably, has been the game of the year in college basketball. This one's been pretty good. Well, and Kansas able to go with its original starting lineup. Kentucky's original lineup not available because of fouls. No Willis, no Lee. Labissiere and Poitras in the front court for Kentucky. Briscoe is in the game right now, despite the cramping problem that he's had in his leg tonight. And Kansas sticking with that hybrid basically looks like a triangle in two on Euless and Murray. Devontae Graham on Murray. And Euless looks very frustrated as if they're not doing what they're supposed to do. A save by Selden. What a play to give Kansas the ball. And what a game he has had on both ends of the floor. Graham. And Poitras down with a rebound. Kansas looks like they're going to stick with this defense and make it difficult for Kentucky to be able to get into the lane. And twice in a row, the ball not in the hands of Euless in the half court. Here he comes to get it. Euless being guarded by Frank Mason. That's the two on the triangle and two. Briscoe into traffic and a foul. Well, you know he's going to draw it, and you just can't keep him out of the paint. He's just so strong. He's so good with the ball. He can get basically anywhere he wants to go. But he's going to have to improve his perimeter shooting, and especially his free throw shooting, because with his ability to get into the lane and draw fouls, He's giving points away, not being able to hit a better percentage overall. He shot him well in here today. Six for ten on the night for Briscoe. Which for a 40% free throw shooter is quite an improvement. I mentioned earlier he made five of six in the win over Missouri this week. He started well tonight. He was four, made his first four. But he has struggled since, just two of seven since. Nice back door. And Selden will go to the free throw line. Boy, nice call play there by Bill Self after the free throws. You got two wings coming off screens, essentially off the low post, and then hit the elbow. And then the immediate back door to take advantage of the overplay against the freshman Jamal Murray. Just well designed and well executed. And Selden continues to add to his career high totals. The foul was on Labissiere, his fourth. So he and Poitras both have four. Well, Selden came into this game. It wasn't like he was shooting the ball extraordinarily well. He's 7 of 20, his last 22 from three. Well, he's playing like a Wooden Award candidate. He's on that midseason list right now, one of the 25. Hybrid defense again? Yep. And they're just, that triangle, they're just packing the paint and then reacting in the last part of the shot clock. Graham chasing Euless. The BCR turnaround jumper. Well, there you can see the skill that so many people have identified in Scal LaBissier. He, he lacks strength. And he needs to become a better rebounder, but he can shoot it and he can block shots right now. Tied again. Not for long. <laughs> 
He hasn't been good tonight. He's been sensational. He's tonight. been great. Yeah. And that, that's the way a man takes the ball to the basket and finishes. What a big time play in a big time game by Wayne Selden. You know, they say big time players make big time plays in big time games. That makes Wayne Selden a big time player. Turns the corner, Scala BCR comes over to block it, and he gets a face full of Wayne Selden dunking the ball through the rim. Wow. <laughs> Not quite, Hold Monmouth, me back. not quite Monmouth, no. but pretty good. <laughs> and look who's at the free throw line again for Kentucky. At the line, one and one. One and one. Still just one and one. And missing the front end. That puts Kentucky in a bind. He's now missed six of his last eight. Kansas with the ball and the lead. Kansas running the play called one down. Here comes the ball screen. Mason now with a switch. Lebesier on him. And Hawkins is called for the foul, trying to guard Lucas. So Lucas will get a couple of free throws. Lucas in there for his experience, his rebounding, his defense. They don't look to him for a lot of offense. 64% free throw shooter on the season. He does a good job of sealing off inside. He posts hard. And of late, he's really rebounded very, very well. Had 10 rebounds against Texas, followed it up with nine rebounds in his next game. Murray returns for Hawkins. And even though Kentucky's short on numbers, and this has been, as we mentioned before, a war of attrition, there is still a long way to go in this one. Three-point game, two and a half to go, Kentucky ball. Murray has got to be active, and Murray can be a screener as well. Euless has it taken away by Graham. Selden fouled and will head to the free throw line. No basket. Selden going to the line. Boy, in that triangle in two, there was basically a switch. He had a switch off onto Murray where Selden switched off. That left Mason at the top, and he knocked Mason knocked the ball away with that left hand from Tyler Euless. Graham picked it up. What a terrific play by Mason. Really good communication between Mason and Selden on the defensive switch of responsibility. And Jay, that's the fifth on LeBissier. So John Calipari will go back to Hawkins. He's now got four guards, four, six, four, and under, and Poitras in the game. And there's nobody to protect the rim. So right now, Kansas has got to continue to attack the rim because there are no, aside from Poitras, there are no shot blockers there. So somebody like Briscoe or Murray is going to have to cover Lucas and give up a lot of size. Boy, they left Wayne Selden hanging. Wayne Selden was looking behind him <laughs> to, get, to get a little, get a little high five, a little love, and Frank Mason left him hanging. And his monster night continues. 32. Matt 32. He matched Buddy Heald's 32 that he got at LSU. And Wayne Selton has a shoe untied, but so what? Everything's going well. Got away with a walk there. Hawkins the corner three. In and out. Lucas secures the rebound. Mason behind the back. And now he'll slow things down. Use some clock, make Kentucky guard you. And then remember, there are no shot blockers at the rim. Mason sheds Briscoe. Now pulls it back out again with seven to shoot. Briscoe the foul. Really, Briscoe playing with a cramp and I mean, he did everything he could for about 25 seconds there. Well, he showed a lot of courage, but without a shot blocker behind you, well, you've just got Kansas driving the lane at will. 
and putting you in a position to foul or let them complete the play. It's a smart play by Frank Mason. Well, they missed a lot early, but they're making them when they need to now. Now, Wayne Selton going to go and give a, give a little, little love to Mason. He left him hanging last time. He gives, gives a little bit of love after that. They use six of seven from the line in overtime. Wayne Selton was turned around when he hit those free throws. Don't leave a free throw shooter hanging. You leave me hanging. <laughs> wrong guy on the wrong night to leave hanging. Six-point game. Well, this defense has been a real puzzle for Kentucky. Eulis no. Ellis the rebound. And Ellis the blockout. That was a big time blockout. Gotta think about fouling here. Into the final minute, and Al Murray wraps up Lucas. Lucas split a pair last time he was at the line here in overtime. Well, there's still time for Kentucky. And Kansas is in control, but there's a lot left to do here for both teams to get a win. 24 for 40 from the line, and even 60% for both teams. Actually, Kentucky cooled off as Briscoe started hot and then went cold. Well, to give up 41 free throws and still be in the game is remarkable for Kentucky. Murray fouled by Lucas. Boy, and Eulis looks like he's cramping up. Yep. And these guys have given everything they've got and then some. I still don't think Eulis has come out of the game. All Heck no. Right. Would you take him out? No. <laughs> Briscoe's had issues with cramps. Three Kentucky front court players have fouled out. Don't forget over on ABC, San Antonio and Cleveland. A little Saturday night NBA action coming your way. They are well underway in Cleveland right now. Next game's on ESPN News right now. Lucas out, Green in. And Green into the ball game because of his ability to knock down free throws. Better ball handler. Green the rebound. Dribbles out of the double team and finds Selden. And it'll be Selden going to the free throw line. They can just about salt it away here with another trip or two with some points at the line. Wayne Selden right now with 32 points. A chance to push that up past the great performance that Oklahoma's Buddy Heald had against LSU in a terrific win in Baton Rouge, where he had 32 points. Previous career high for Selden was 25. They're not leaving him hanging this time. Well, they exactly. <laughs> he owed him a couple. Some long faces on that Kentucky bench. I'll tell you what, Kentucky's played hard. They've turned the corner. Ellis, another offensive rebound. Poitras. Got a hand on it, and he will earn Kentucky a possession. It's out of bounds off Selden. Everybody okay just to our right? <laughs> By the Kansas radio crew. Bob Davis, and you know that Greg Gurley wasn't there to take a charge. <laughs> I think he's still underneath the table. Seven point lead, 26.7 to go, and I think they're going to check again to make sure 
who should get possession here was it off of Selden or Murray I think it's off of Murray but it looked like simultaneous I'm not sure that you're going to be able to overturn it overturn yeah. that it doesn't look indisputable. I think given the level of play and the level of intensity this game tonight it's been a you know, we talk about the players cramping up those these three officials have been running up and down the court for 45 minutes as well they've had a strong night they have but they're not they're not banging into bodies That's so I think it's a little easier <laughs> to be an official Kansas try to extend the nation's second longest home court winning streak to 35 and it's Kansas ball. That's surprising. That doesn't look indisputable to me, but you're disputing the disputability of that call. <laughs> disputing the indisputability. <laughs> hey, we haven't checked out of the game either, folks. We've been here for 45 as well. <laughs> Boy, what an atmosphere in here. As, as good as there is. It's as good as it gets. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I look at Allen Fieldhouse as the St. Andrews of college basketball with the history of this building and this university. James Naismith was the first coach here who invented the game. Dean Smith played here. Adolf Rupp, Wilt Chamberlain, Clyde Lavelle. And Naismith, Naismith lives, doesn't he? <laughs> that was kind of a Benjamin Button version of Naismith. <laughs> Well, they, the 20 seconds or so just before the tip, and you and I have been very fortunate to do a number of games here, but every time you and I come here and do a game, it makes the hair on the back of your neck, because we don't have hair on the top of our head, it makes, <laughs> it, makes, it makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. I mean, it is a spine-tingling experience here just before the tip. No question. And they're going into Rock Chalk right now to salt this one away. But Kansas has to be very pleased to... In a game where it was difficult to guard the ball and keep these Kentucky drivers in front. But Perry Ellison foul trouble in the first half, but they got it out of win here. Back into conference play. Nothing easy in the Big 12. Kansas a game out of the top spot of the conference right now. I think anybody's looking forward to that game in Norman on the 13th of February. Well, the Sooners are one incredible group of three-point shooters and add in Ryan Spangler who can pick and pop. We've got a team that's played together for several years. And Wayne Selden going to go off to a well-deserved standing O. What a game by Wayne Selden. A career-high 33. And as you mentioned, two extraordinary defensive plays, too, that were very important at the time he made them. The home court winning streak will continue for Kansas. They'll go to 2-0 and in overtime this year. The triple overtime win here over Oklahoma. And now an overtime victory over Kentucky as well. Just a, a great game and a great atmosphere tonight. As Euless knocks down a late three. So he's going to wind up with 26. Career high for him. And that'll be all tonight here at Allen Fieldhouse. Wayne Selden and the Kansas Jayhawks win a thriller over Kentucky. Good night to be sitting in a college basketball arena watching a game like this. This two of the great programs in college basketball history going toe to toe in an amazing venue. And Wayne Selden was the man of the match. Wayne Selden from the start of the game was aggressive. Not just in looking for his perimeter shot but in driving getting to the basket. And he responded not only on the offensive end, but did a terrific job on the defensive end as well. And he really, I think, set the tone for Kansas early and carried it through the entire.